I can't control him. So we're gone. So I need to, I need to gain control over this dog. Hey, what's going on guys? Today we have a reactive German Shepherd. Jay is a new dog in our board and train program. Today I'm gonna to walk you through the significant difference between a dog that is reactive on the leash entirely because of the leash and a dog that actually has behavioral problems or potentially is aggressive with other dogs on the leash. When a dog is reacting, they're frustrated and they're a little bit insecure. So they see another animal, they're out in public, they're attached to a piece of rope or a leash or whatever, and then they go to investigate that animal that they've been smelling for the last 20 minutes, and then they get they get pulled back. And then they immediately go into like this frenzy uh, type of reaction. They go, rah, 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 and they start barking. Or sometimes it's even like right when they see another dog, there's no hesitation. It's just explosive barking. And um, the majority of that is just leash reactivity. So it's only gonna happen on the leash. Um, and sometimes it's gonna happen in the car or in the house. But the point is, is there's restriction. There's something in between you I'm sorry, the dog and, and the other dog or the person or whatever. Let me show you what that looks like and how to develop the steps to be more in control and have a better relationship and get your dog more comfortable. It starts off with just introducing basic leash pressure to the dog. Jay heel. Now I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna turn. Jay heel. good. Now if the dog, heel, doesn't respond, heel they get a little correction or they get a little pop. So essentially guys, what I'm doing is I'm exercising and introducing leash pressure with the verbal cue heel. So I'm gonna turn, J heel. If he heals with me, good heel. Positive reinforcement, no correction, no punishment whatsoever. J heel, good heel. Now this is the first step because what happens guys is a lot of times when people have leash reactivity issues is because their dog doesn't have the basic foundation they need to be successful in any fashion, which means you're not even gonna be able to go outside and be successful with your dog if your dog is just a dog. Cause you don't have the, the, the it's like snowing out here with this pollen, it's crazy. But you're not gonna have the ability to, to communicate with your dog properly to get anything done. So that means when you're out and your heel isn't good, your brake isn't good, your just your obedience in general and your understanding of leash pressure, which means if your dog does something wrong and you don't have the availability to tell them and punish them when it happens then what are you what are you doing you can't beat around the bush and just say like this is going to get better hopefully through time no it's not you have to make sure that when your dog goes Rah, there's another dog and they freak out and yell just like a kid throws a tantrum you have to be very assertive to shut that down it's because you care about your dog if your dog actually feels the urge to completely lose their mind when they see another dog from a distance, imagine how your dog is living their life. They're, they're very insecure, they're very nervous. Um, so I like to call it counter conditioning obedience to the reactivity. So he's, the dog sees another dog, they get parked up, rah, 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 they start barking, you say heel, they go, oh crap, we practiced that, I gotta go with him, and if they don't, they get corrected. But it's a fair leverage point for you as the handler because the dog simply understands, I know what you're asking, and I'll, I, okay, I'll go. So what I'm doing here, guys, is a simple tune-up. You guys see me do this often with dogs. Heel, good. So I would say, guys, nine times out of 10 with a dog that's reactive on the leash, they're reactive because they don't know what else to do, and they feel the urge to be in the driver's seat. They don't feel like the person that's handling them is in control. The other question I get, guys, is where should your dog actually be? Heel. Uh, I like to keep the dog pretty much, oh, good auto sit, bub. I like to keep the dog right here. Now the heel command, guys, historically is the dog at your heels. Dog training is very versatile and very dependent on how you train, just like cooking I always talk about, like a chef. Um, but our heel is just walking forward loose leash. So I, like, I don't like the dog's chest going past my knees necessarily, but it depends and it's very discretional on the dog's behavior. If you get a giant, giant dog, you gotta be really tight on where they're supposed to be. Or if you get a dog that's really sensitive and turns on a pin no matter where they're at, it's okay. So it's not really like a binary thing of like your dog cannot pass here or there. It's really discretionary on you and your dog's behavior and your expectations.
J heel. So just pay attention to the leash pressure, guys. This is what you're watching. Good. J heel. Good. So loose leash. That's a heel to me. It's a heel in probably a lot of dog training books. Heel. Good. All right, guys, we're gonna do a giveaway. You have to do three things, very simple things. I'm gonna be giving away three no bed dog face masks for you. Um, we're gonna ship global, so it doesn't matter where you guys live. Ready, here we go. All you have to do is watch this video from start to finish, like this video, and leave letter by letter in the comments below your dog's name to automatically get entered to win, and I'll pick a winner in 24 hours. One question I get oftentimes, guys, is what equipment I'm using. Right now, I'm using our four-foot training leash with our safety clip, as well as a Herm Springer 2.25 with a buckle. Um, the buckle is as seen. Uh, it's very easy for us to take on and off. Um, and more importantly, it's easy for the clients who this dog is going to go home to to take on and off. Now, we started off with a slip collar with this dog and he was choking himself out, really putting a lot of pressure on his throat, which is not safe. Um, and so we just switched to the Herm Springer 2.25 like we usually do. And uh, the Herm Springer is the only prong collar that I use because it's the best. There's, there's nothing that compares to Herm Springer and the quality of collars that they use. Uh, everything down from the metal to uh, the durability of the collars. So important things, safety clip, nice training leash, um, and then the Herm Springer. I'll have the link in the description below. When a dog does something absolutely unacceptable, you shut it down right when it happens. And I'm not gonna use a harness. I'm not gonna use a flat collar because it's not safe. It's gonna put too much pressure where it doesn't need to go. It doesn't actually hurt the dog. So these aren't sharp or anything. All these do is they evenly distribute pressure. So the actual physicality that you're giving the dog is safer for the dog. Um, and not, in, not, in, not to mention, I don't have any fur. Um, this particular dog has two furs, an insulator fur and a guard hair fur. So it's, it's easier to just do it right the first time. So you don't have to continue to, and I'm sure people out there are kind of like nodding their head like, heel, 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 heel. That's not good. If Hey Kyle, uh, we're ready for a dog. Whenever you get a chance, you can come to the side. Copy, I'll be right out. I'll put the prong back on and just not use it um, and see how he reacts. Jay, heel. Okay. So if you guys are watching and noticing, Watch how much pressure is put, ow, is put on this dog's neck. Get in front, Taylor, get in front. So, heel, Jay, heel, heel, heel. So if you're, if you're watching behaviorally, he doesn't have the ability. I don't have, I can't control him. So we're gone. So I need to, I need to gain control over this dog. You know what I'm gonna do, guys? So I'm gonna put the Herm Springer on. So no control. He is too stimulated. He's insecure, he's nervous, he's anxious. He's wagging his tail, not in a great way. Stre potentially stressing the other dog out. So we're just gonna pop the Herm Springer on. So my goal is, guys, is to correct that behavior, neutralize the situation, and make it a calmer environment for everybody. Jay, heel. Heel. Good. Heel. Jay, heel. Heel. Good. Jay, heel. Very responsive. Good man. Jay, sit. Jay, heel. Yes. That was a physical cue. Shake it off, buddy. Well done. Physical cue, guys. So I turned, he paid attention. There was not even a verbal cue that I needed to take him away from this dog. What, what happened? What, what was the difference? Why is this dog within two minutes calmer now? Um, there's no fancy editing. There's no before and afters. There's no, we're doing this in three days. Nope, this is real time working right now. What's the difference, Tom? Is it, it's, it's dealing with an experienced handler, dog trainer, as well as using some tools to help us break through and be more effective and more efficient to communicate to say, hey, 
what you're doing right there is inappropriate and I don't want you to do it. Well, Tom, why do people hate the prong? I go into this other channel, they said that's the worst thing in the whole world, you should never do that to your dog. Why would you want to torture your... I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this dog is obviously not being tortured. So the really easy question, guys, is very simple. It's, do you want to punish your dog for behaviors or do you not? I think that that's really the, the difference between using equipment to, to get a dog's attention and tell them what they're doing wrong when it happens versus avoiding it and spending two or three weeks dancing around with hot dogs trying to hopefully de-escalate and desensitize the situation. Good. Heel. Good man. Heel. Good job. So he's smelling her out. Good heel, buddy. Good heel. Good. Good job. Good, so that was good for you guys to see. Jay, come. Yes, good boy. Jay, sit. Good. So that was good. I want you guys to just, I want to be real. I mean, that's what we've always done in this channel is I'm not trying to, I'm showing you real deal stuff. This isn't, what do you do with an aggressive German Shepherd and they come out rolling their back? This is what you guys would consider aggressive as far as the, the consumer goes. So I'm giving you the real deal. What you saw there was interesting because he dove at the dog like really fast, but the vocalization stopped. So he's not as anxious as he was. He's still trying to get to her, but he's not so anxious and stressed about it. So that's what you're seeing is you can see in his demeanor now, if you watch him, his eyes, his breathing, he's still like, hey, there's another dog. What do we do? And I say, hey buddy, it doesn't matter. You just pay attention to me and I'll walk you through the process. And that's what we're developing. So we're gonna keep at it. So you guys are noticing, I'm also not distracting myself or, or Jay with treats or anything like that. And all he needs is a, hey Jay, good job buddy, good heel. That's all dogs need. They just love when you're even in the room with them. They don't need treats. It gets in your way. I'm only gonna correct him if he does something I don't like. I don't think it's fair for me to necessarily tell him, hey, you can't look at that dog squirming over there, that pretty girl. That's not fair. So I'm being very clear through operant conditioning of like, hey, that's okay, that's fine. Hey, dude, look, because ultimately that's gonna make him more confident. He's like, man, that was the first time I, I walked around a dog that close without feeling this chemical imbalance of being crazy or a lunatic. So that's, I'm gonna do this again. I want you to watch carefully how I'm presenting myself because this is big. Take a deep breath, put your shoulders straight, nice and loose on this leash. If he does anything, like he goes, Rawr, and, he, and I go, whoa, 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 what do you, that, that's, that's inappropriate behavior, We're not, that's not acceptable. And over time, he'll learn like, okay, that's good and that's bad. Just like kids, good, bad, operant conditioning. Here we go, heel. Good heel, Jay. Good heel, Jay, heel. Good heel. So there, I give him a little, ah, uh ah, -uh. heel. Good. Heel, little tap. Good job. Good. Good job. Jay, sit. So what we're going to do next, guys, is get the snowblower out and get some of this pollen out of the way. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to get another dog out. Um, I'm going to stay with the prong because it's giving me the control. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As you guys know, I'll, I'll engage with you guys as much as I possibly can to answer your dog training questions. But I just wanted to um, show you this first dog. We're going to grab another dog, which will be a little bit different demeanor. All right, guys, so here's our other dog, Kirby. Getting vocal. Kyle, just stop right there for a second. Getting vocalization. So what I'm going to do is I want to break this down to as real as I possibly can for you guys when you're out for your walk. I wouldn't start this until you guys have your heel and your basic leash pressure down. Don't try to go out and work on advanced stuff in an advanced environment with very low or poor or not good obedience or relationship stuff. So Kyle, I'm going to have you walk uh, back to that bush, that tree, past the semi, and we're just going to pass each other, okay? This part, I hope he reacts right now um, because it's going to give a real life opportunity for you guys to hand, see me handle it. Heel. He starts to build, heal, correct him, remind him what he's supposed to be doing. Good, heal, good. Good heal, yes, good boy, good job. Okay, break, good job, well done, well done. So that was, that was really nice. Um, so again, guys, like, this is his first session, really 
diving into this. The first couple sessions, the first week he was here, we just worked on obedience. We didn't really work on the reactivity. Now we're diving into the reactivity. Um, and he, he's still, he's still excited. My goal isn't to be like, hey, stop being a dog and never get excited about another dog. I just want him to be polite. So it's like kids in Disney World. Yay, we're excited, we're here. Let's run across the parking lot. Absolutely not. If you do that, I'm punishing you for that. They say, okay, what do you want me to do then? I say, well, I want you to hold my hand. When we get in, you can be a kid. Same thing with him. When he's on his break, he can be a dog. But until then, you have to make sure that you're controlling a lot of the situations. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna circle Kyle and Kirby. And um, just, I want you to just see what, what should I expect from a dog? What's okay and what's not? You can stay right there, Kyle. Jay, heel. Nice and loose leash. Shoulders are straight. Good heel. Good heel. Good job, Kirby. Kirby also came here for uh, dog reactivity. He's doing very well. Good heel. Ah. Good. Ah, ah. Good. So sit. Good sit. So it's not ideal to get a dog to, whoa, what are we doing here? It's not ideal to get a dog to like sit there and focus like that. In this situation, I, I really don't care because I know that this particular dog is really just confused on what he's supposed to be doing. So now, okay, where do we go from here? Cause I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I wish I showed you my phone before we started this, but I don't have it. But this was probably um, 15 to 20 minutes at the most. Um, and you saw how bad the reactivity was. And again, what's the difference? I punished him clearly. We're not doing that. This is okay. And that's what it was, guys. That's the difference. Again, I'll leave the link in the description below of this setup. Um, and you guys can, can uh, buy this setup if you want. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below. And I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't yet, don't forget, like, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment comment in the comments down below. That's the way to support me. Let me know what you thought of the video. I appreciate you guys watching. I will talk to you next time. Peace. Get it that I'm never going back. Get it that I'm never going back. I get to it out the runway. Different incomes, not one way. Living life on a one way. I knew this would happen someday. You can ask my day one day. Cloudy days turn to sun rays. Only way to way up way. Know my way, know my feng shui. I get to it first, I got you mad. I get sad when I get to it last. 